Good afternoon. This is Karen Clark with Triangle Empowered, where we share critical information with our community. And uh, today I've got somebody, I feel like I don't even need to introduce her because I feel like we see her every day. You're like a local celebrity now, <laughs> Dr. Mary Cohen. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Um, do you can you go to the grocery store without people like recognizing you? Do you go to t you probably don't even go into the grocery store, but like do people I, recognize I have you? To, yeah, well I, I have to go shopping like everyone else. And yes, I, I would say so. Um yep, usually they go, wait a second, you look like that three W's lady. <laughs> and I'm like, I am that lady. Um, um and so it's people, always so please back up. Thanks. Do you, do you have do you uh feel like uh, chastising people in public? Are they doing what they need to do? I, I actually see, you know, a lot of really, really good work of folks wearing masks. So I, I have not actually needed to go up to folks and say like, hey, um, so I think folks are working really hard. I live here in the Raleigh area. Um, and so, yeah, I think folks have, have really heard the message. And I'm so appreciative because, look, we have a lot of virus around in our state right now. So I'm very concerned, particularly as we move into the holidays, folks really really need to take uh, take care of themselves, their friends, their family members. We, we had more than 8,500 cases in the last 24 hours alone. That's a lot of cases. And so we, we have a lot of work to do to protect each other. But vaccine is here uh, in North Carolina. It's so, super exciting. So we have to work hard so that we can make sure that everyone is here for next Christmas. So I, I do want to talk about the vaccine because in our community, as you know, there is a there's a lot of distrust, a lot of concern. When I'm on social media, I see all kinds of theories and fears, and 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 I want to talk to you about that. Like, is the vaccine safe? Has it been tested enough? Do we know everything we need to know? Give us give us the details on that. Yeah, Karen, what a Great question. So here's what I can I can tell you. So for the two vaccines that are being authorized for use, um, there are two of them. Seventy thousand people were in trials to make sure that they were safe and effective. Okay. Um, and what they saw was no major safety concerns. Um, I'm not going to say that you don't have side effects like your arm being sore or feeling crummy um, mm -hmm. in, in the day after you take it. So, right, it, it's, it's not doesn't mean that nothing is there. It actually means if you're getting a reaction like a low grade fever, feeling icky, actually, that's the vi that's the vaccine working. Mm -hmm. um, so that's good. That means your body is responding as it should to the vaccine and it's building up that immunity. That's your body building its immunity, which is great, which means that if you actually see the real COVID virus, your your body will fight it off immediately and you won't get COVID. Um, there's no COVID itself in the vaccine. I think that's really important for folks to know because folks are like, I don't want to inject myself. No, there's no COVID in the vaccine. Um, again, studied on a lot of folks. Um, the issue that folks really need to understand also, though, is it's in very limited supply right now. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, that that is that is a challenge. So we do have to make sure that we can get it to our healthcare workers first, those who work in our long-term care space, and then we'll get to folks who are at highest risk for COVID, um, folks with two or more chronic conditions, those who are over 65. Okay. Well, and that's a great question because uh, obviously all of the news right now is the vaccine is here. The vaccine is here. We've seen all of the kind of press events where people are, you know, this is the first person in this state to get it and, and here for the average person, like, like, you know, our listeners who don't work in healthcare, who don't work in long-term care facilities, theoretically in North Carolina, are we looking at June, July, September. Do we have any idea at this point? Yeah, I would say spring. And I'm no, notably, I didn't give you a month there. Spring is long. Um, so the the issue is we don't really know the how much vaccine is going to be manufactured, and so we don't know what's what North Carolina is going to have access to. So, and we also don't know how fast we are going to be able to do the vaccinations. So those two things make me say spring, but that's not not that far from now. Like, right. We've had, we've, we've hung in there for this year and um, it's exciting that we have this additional tool. Um, I think by January, we will start vaccinating adults again, who are, who are at highest risk for getting sick. Those who have 
two or more conditions that put you at risk, things like severe lung disease, severe heart disease, um, those kinds of uh, things, or are over, and are over 65, like that's our really critical group that that we see get really sick, unfortunately, and find themselves uh, in the hospital. So that's who we want to vaccinate first. And as someone who who has a, a very dear family member that is in that group, my grandmother is 92. Uh, someone like that, how do you explain to them it's important for you to get this vaccine? It's to keep you safe, especially when we often struggle getting those older family members to take the flu vaccine. Yeah. Yes. So what I would say is we know that COVID is unfortunately way more deadly than the flu. We've mm -hmm. seen it. So we've had three times as many COVID deaths this year in North Carolina than we've had flu deaths in 10 years. Wow. Right. That's that's so. So what I was this is a different level of concern. I am highly concerned for particularly for your grandmother, mm -hmm. right? That I am worried that if she is exposed to COVID and she gets it, that she she's at very high risk, unfortunately, from dying from the, and that's that's different than than the the flu. Now the flu is a risk, and we always want folks to get their flu shot also, but this is unfortunately more severe and more deadly. So I think there's a higher level of concern. We also are seeing folks get vaccinated who are older. I think actually in the United Kingdom, one of the first um, people vaccinated was over 90. Right. Um, and so I think what the data is showing is actually is the vaccine is able to prevent severe disease, which is really important, um, particularly for our elderly. Um, and so I really encourage everyone to get good information, Mm -hmm. Make sure you're following the information from medical doctors and from um, the State Department of Health and Human Services and our experts. Uh, learn about it um, and make good decisions for your family. And so, um, you know, like I said, the vaccine has not seen any major safety side effects. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what they have seen is, you know, in the 24 hours after you get the vaccine, you can get a, a low grade fever. You can feel kind of crummy and, and, and not good. Um, but that's your body building up its immunity so that when you do see the COVID virus, you won't get it. And how do you envision uh, the rollout of the vaccine being? Is it going to be kind of like, you know, the, the community testing that we've seen here in Wake County where it's like you drive up and you get your swab? Is it going to be like you drive up and you get your shot and then you go on your way? Uh, how do you how do you see that happening? Yes. So eventually, yes. But okay. I would say not at first. So okay. because the supply is going to be limited, mm -hmm. um, I think you're going to see more uh, limited vaccine uh events just for uh, certain folks. And now we want to keep it safe. So you, we are going to see ones that have a lot of social distancing likely to be outside, maybe drive through. I think there'll be a number of different ways folks will do it. It'll likely often be associated with your local health department. Mm -hmm. um, and so whether it's the uh, Wake County Health Department or uh, Durham, Orange, right? Um, it'll be associated with that. And they'll have a different variety of ways in which they'll set those up just depending on how how they 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 orchestrate it, um, but we want everyone to continue to wear masks, mm -hmm. right? Because you're not immune with just the first shot. That's the important thing too. Sorry, we didn't talk about. There's two shots right. uh, with this with this vaccine, different than the flu shot, which is only one. COVID has to have two shots. So um, you do get some protection, we think, from that first shot, but you have to get the second one to truly get your immunity and protect you from getting COVID. And will there be any sort of uh, tracking of people to make sure that they've actually gotten shot number two? Great question. So, yes, we have to make sure to send you email reminders. Actually, we'll do the low tech. So when you get your first shot, you'll get a card that'll have your appointment written down for either 21 days later or 28 days later, depending on which one you get, which vaccine you get. Okay. And, do, and we're going to tell you, take a picture of it and put it in your phone because I know I lose those cards immediately. <laughs> so as soon as you get that card, take a picture, put it in your phone. But then we also will have an email reminder system, again, to both make sure you get that same shot. So if you got a Pfizer shot the first time, you have to get the Pfizer shot the second time, okay. um, but also to remind you to come back if, at the right time. And my last question is, what about cost? Do we know if people are going to have to pay for this? Is it going to be covered by insurance? If you don't have insurance, how is that all going to work? 
Yeah. So the the vaccine itself has been purchased by the federal government. So the government's paid for the vaccine, but the administration of it still needs to be paid for, like the the work of actually paying the nurse or the doctor to give it to you because that's their time. And um, and uh, so that is either going to be paid for by your insurance if you have an uh, you have insurance, and if you don't, that will be picked up by the the government, either the state or the federal government. Um, we similar to how te- how how testing works, right? If you have testing, and they can bill your insurance. But we also at the state have, are running free testing. Um, actually, we have three hundred free testing sites. Just to remind folks, three hundred free testing sites before Christmas. Mm-hmm. So go get free testing. I think you'll see some similar things related to to vaccine. Again, we don't have the supply yet. Right. to be ready to do it. But I think that's what we'll, we'll build towards uh, by the spring. All right. This is really good information, information that I think um, everybody needs, but especially our listeners, because, you know, there, there are a lot of questions. So thank you for taking time out to, uh, to answer those questions for our listeners. Absolutely. Great to be with you. And uh, just a reminder, make sure, get a test if you're going to gather, wear a mask all the time, wear a mask all the time. All right. Thanks, Karen, for the time. Thank you so much. Hey, I'll see you on TV, I'm sure. That's right. (laughs) Uh, I I can guarantee it. (laughs) All right. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.